morning it's another kiln opening um, I have high hopes for this one though um, because I have some nice pieces in here um, but whenever you say that that's when you get kicked <laughs> so so let's have a look down here it's 129 Fahrenheit so it's perfect to unload Ooh. okay um, we've got some good Temniku gold and a lot of crystals in the glazes um, so it was a good firing that new schedule that I've posted I'll, I'll post it again um, is working great the Tenbuku gold is really much more gold than I'm used to seeing so it didn't stick to the bottom that's always a good sign see how uh, I'm used to seeing it more like it is just there at the bottom, but this time the crystallization in the iron just went really gold. The variegated blue and oatmeal um, melted less. Um, uh, well, it melted, but it actually crystallized a lot. So it's a very different effect, but it's got a really nice sheen to that. So we'll wait for the lid to come out of that one. Then I have another one the same. Oh, my, my stilt just lost a pin. Let's see if I can put that back afterwards. So there we've got the gold again. This is a very slow cool firing schedule, but I'm not soaking much at all, so I'm not getting that drip. There you go, that usually, look how much on the handle you can see the drip of the oatmeal all the way down to about two centimeters from the bottom at an inch so it's still running a lot but that's a nice teapot not much of the blue left in those pieces and this is I decided because I have a lot of black pieces I would do a teapot that had some black in it uh, and it's got variegated blue and oatmeal over the top which I probably didn't need to do quite as much as that so um, I kind of think it'd be nice if I just done it down to about there. But it's a nice black teapot to match all those black pieces that we have. Green teapot. Um, with matte, no it's with apple green and oatmeal over the top as well. Um, so this is chun green, apple green and then oatmeal so that turned out very nice too i got a little stilt sanding to do there and then nothing stuck so far this one is chun green apple green and oatmeal again it's a cookie jar i hope all the lids to these teapots and jars fit nicely Oh, that's pleasant. Got a lot of running, didn't we? The Chun Green. Here's a tip. Single glaze at the bottom of your pieces only, and you can do whatever you want up the upper half. Um, but just I'd like tend to go with just a single layer at the bottom because that's where the glaze runs. Um, so if it's going to run from here all the way down there, you only want to have a single layer here, otherwise that's going to run all the way down onto the shelf. Another cookie jar, and that's my dark blue with some chattering showing through very well. And oatmeal over variegated blue in the upper half. It's actually all dark blue and then the variegated blue and oatmeal was glazed over the top. But that's a nice cookie jar too. And I have to stop there because then I've got a piece of Jackie's and she likes to unload her own. Okay, so this is the last one on this shelf. It's the bottom of a teapot. I'm going to let Vaughn take the, um, the uh, stilt off. So this teapot was uh, on stoneware clay and carved into fairly deeply, so it was a more thickly thrown pot and glazed in, in layers. 
and then um, you know scraping the first layer off and adding more glaze so that the the carving really gets um, accentuated. If you're worried about the stilt, in case they cut you, you just use pliers like this and it'll clip right off. Next pieces. Um, what we got here? Okay, so I'll take this one out next because this is the top to that teapot. This is the lid. So it's the queen's head. Actually, these are all the lids here. So I'll just show these and then later we'll show the lid. Whoops, sitting on the pot. That was close. Yeah. Here's the this is the lid to another jar. One did not have a stilt inside. This is a bird over, over landscape. So the greens are really sticking in there into the carved areas. That's what I like. And this is the owl head. He's a combination of greens, folk art white, purples, blues. There's a lot of colors in the owl. No, no stilt. Okay, and here's the cat head. And he was glazed in folk art white and mouse brown. He only had two colors going on in him and, the, and then the pot to follow. Okay, so I'm going to show you the jars that just came out on the level before. So this is the lid for this piece. Oh, it fit perfectly. A little bit of a rattle, remember? I tell you to make them a little loose, just so that you can get glaze on the If you're going to stilt anyway. If you're not going to stilt, you're just going to use raw clay. You can make them as tight as you want. But, um, but there you go, that's the lid. Nice. And that's the little hole is so that you don't flow the liquid out of the spout when you put a deep flange lid into the tea. I think this one is the lid for this piece. There's two lids the same here for two jar, two teapots. There we go. And the same for this one. Ten Gold variegated blue and oatmeal. And this is the black one. So that fits, that's a nice lid for that piece, I think. We'll have pictures at the end of the video for you to see them in close up. And this lid is for this cookie jar. So that fits nicely on there too. So sit that one there for me. I have these sitting on the kiln right opposite and they're hot. So there's the stilt on the inside. So you normally, if you do this, you just click it. If it feels a bit stiff, you don't. Oh, I've got to grow. Oh no, I thought that was gonna have to grind, but I usually have to sand the three stilt marks. But if you don't feel like it's loose, use pliers because you can slip and cut your fingers. Dark blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. And then we've got four more lids, which I'll show you on the jaws. See, this one stick a little hard, so then you just take these and wiggle it a little bit, and it'll pop right out. It diff some oatmeal never does that, but other glazes can actually build up a thickness around the pin of the stilt, and it becomes hard to actually take out. This glaze should be easy. And it is, because it's a matte glaze and you don't have to have it very thick. This one is oak apple green, and that one can sometimes be tricky. 
but you'll save your fingers if you just use a pair of pliers when you're doing this. Okay, I'm going to start pulling out the jars. I'm going to be careful about the stilts here. Let's see if I can do this. the first time I've done that. Okay, so this is the landscape jar. That looks really nice. And I'm going to put the bird lid on top of it. So what I'm going for is to have the first layer of glaze really um, sink into the incised lines, the scafido and the carving. Well, that one reminds me of a David Hopi painting. And there we go. Okay, let's see what's next. Is that a tight fit? Perfect in one place. Oh, this one didn't have a stealth. Okay, yeah, this one turned out good. This is the the tree, and it's going to have the rooster roosting in it in a moment. I think the first layer here, you can see the apple green sticking into the leaves. Okay. There we go. Okay, and here's the, the rooster in the branches. There we go. What do we got next? Okay, next is the owl. I'm going to be very careful. Oh, no stilt. Okay. So this is the owl. Um, lots of different colors in the owl. I sponge glazed this in sections so that I could stick to the sec sections together. And there's the, the owl head. Let's see if I get them on straight. Side, the back of the owl, the other wing, and his front. So he's pretty deeply carved in places. And let me see who I got to go. There's just one more mine in here. And that's the cat. And this one, as I said, this one just has two colors. The folk art white, which was over the mouse gray. So it's the mouse gray that's in the sitting in the deep lines and the folk art white over the overall. And here's the cat head sitting in there. So now I have a, a, a tabby cat and a black cat on the display. Okay. And that's uh, my kiln lid here. Okay, so I have four lids here and three jaws. So what's wrong with that? I obviously have a jaw somewhere else. Okay, no running on this level either, but look how far this ran down. So that's what I'm saying. Single glaze on the bottom. You can do two, even three glazes on the top, knowing that they're going to start running. So you have to, but here at least we had about four inches, uh, 10 centimeters of space where it could run. Um, but uh, you just have to be aware, single glaze bottom, play around on the top is okay. Another nice cookie jar. The handles on these are in that video I did and I got the handle tool from artisanpotterytools.com. Oh, this is nice. Look at the greens in there. So basically apple green, matte turquoise and oatmeal. Lots of crystals formed in those glazes. Is there chun green in that one? Uh, no chun green, just apple green, matte turquoise, and oatmeal is my guess. There's the lid. And the last one. Uh, this is mouse gray. Uh, which has changed recently and I suspect what I did because I actually took so I take glazes out and put them in little cups is I poured some um, of my 
blue glaze. Um, one of the glazes is gray too, uh, and I must have poured it into the mouse gray. So it's given the mouse gray a little bit more opacity, which is really nice. It's working out really good. It's still gray, but it has changed. So I just mixed up a new batch of mouse gray, so it'll be back to normal. I actually think maybe I like this better anyway. Um, and there's the lid. Mouse gray, variegated blue and oatmeal. And obviously I have a black jar somewhere. We'll get that out of another kiln, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna show you this one. It's still quite hot. We'll show it later again uh, on the turntable. It's very hot on the bottom. That's why I'm holding it like this. Um, so let me just show you these. Um, and I'll tell you what glazes they are, and I'm going to post them in the videos. Um, first one is mouse gray, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Um, and this one has always done pretty well for me. And there's the oatmeal on the center. So I'm going to give out these three glazed recipes in this video. My green combinations tend to work really well. The chun green, apple green, and oatmeal over the top. That's a really nice glaze combination too. Tenmaku Gold um, is beautiful and it gives you that gold, glorious, warm color uh, with variegated blue and oatmeal. But this one runs a lot, so you've got to be a little careful with it. And that's part of the beauty of it, is it runs and over textures it runs really nicely. Uh, so that glaze I'll give out in this video. And then uh, what else do we have in here? Is this an apple green? Uh, this is an apple green combination with matte turquoise and oatmeal over the top. So I'm gonna give you that glaze recipe, but I have to be a little careful here. I don't wanna give you too many because it's expensive to get started on glazes. Um, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna find you one blue in a minute and then we can actually uh, give you that recipe as well. Um, but there's a yellow here, maybe in the future. This is less popular to, as a color for me, but I always like to have a few of them. Um, but, um, but that's one maybe for the future. Um, what else do we have? Here's the matte turquoise over speckled clay. That's pretty nice too. It sells really well. But then we're going to get into, you know, once again, lots of glazes. So maybe this is one you should hang on and do a little bit later in the future. Um, what else? We have a very, oh, actually, this is variegated blue. This one is variegated blue. And it has some bright blue and oatmeal over the top of it as well. So that one's always done pretty good for me too. I've given all these recipes out in the past. Here's another one from the future maybe. If you stick with it and you have to diversify, there's black. With variegated blue and oatmeal over the top of the black. It's a matte black obviously. Um, that's, that's got all the colors I've already told you about. Variegated blue, mouse gray and oatmeal. And then that's it for this level. Okay, this level has one that I will... This is bright blue, variegated blue and oatmeal. Uh, but the bright blue tends to go a little greenish uh, over the speckled clay. You have to get it much thicker to get a blue out of it. But I like that turquoisey green on these, this clay body. So that bright blue will be in this... Uh, video as well. Uh, so variegated blue and oatmeal go over the top of a lot of things. So you need those two glazes, but you also just need some base glazes to go underneath. Um, this one, I don't know, you might decide. I don't think this is as nice as the bright blue, but this is a really dark blue that works out pretty nice too. And all right, so I could give that one out 
Well, this is the black again. Um, don't know, that's a very dull combination, but people like black at the moment. Here is another apple green working really well with matte turquoise and oatmeal over the top. Uh, this is like the one you just saw, mouse grey with variegated blue and oatmeal over the top. Very nice. So there's, there's another turquoise one. Oh no, that's bright blue. So there's another bright blue one here. So it's important if you're setting up pottery to have uh, your own style and your own colors that identify you different to your neighbors. So, um, so you, I'm giving you a lot of choices. You're just gonna have to select what you're gonna do. You may just go with one glaze comb. I've, no, I've known potters who do nothing but one glaze combination. Everything in their booth is the same. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I personally get bored if I do the same things all the time. So I like to diversify and, and kind of keep, you know, can we come out, come out with something new all the time keeps the, the customers excited. And that's it for this level. There's another one of this. Once again, like I said, you've got bright, uh, sorry, you've got variegated blue, uh, mouse gray in the center in this one. Then it was the variegated blue, and then you've got the oatmeal. And so just three glazes to give you that. Same on the outside there. That was sponged on the outside, which turned out really nice, actually. On the bottom level here, we've got one other glaze that I think is really useful, which is the folk art white, but I change it so it's not white, obviously. I add some yellow ochre to it, which is yellow iron oxide. Um, and uh, and then apple green and oatmeal over the top there. That's a good glaze combination. And down below there, they're all the same glazes that I've got, I've shown you already. This bowl is glazed with my dark blue, with variegated blue that way, and oatmeal that way, with some slip trailing using the cranberry glaze. Um, same on the outside. So the, that's why the dark blue is a little dull, I find it, so that's why I like the bright blue better. But um, the dark blue is nice too. It depends on what you're looking for. I'm just doing highlights out of this kiln because um, it's got a lot of things you've seen before, but there's some nice things I think later on down the line that, well, you haven't. But um, I know you've seen that plate before because I'm making a set of those and that's the last one in the set. And these are the lids that I actually um, fire on stilts, just like that. Even though I cut out a little bit, um, it stays totally flat and all that. So um, this is a Cone 6 Clay 516 from Pottery Supply House. So I'm very happy that this doesn't warp. Um, and I'm firing on three stilts. So I think if I had a four stilt one, there might be some warp, because I don't, I don't know, but I'm just guessing. Um, but this way firing them is really good. And then I just use a tiny little prop to lift it off the kiln shelf a little bit higher. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully you'll see the jaws in a later firing because they're not in this kiln. This is Tenmaku gold when it goes totally gold. And that's because I'm doing this new firing cycle, which is really slow. If we cooled this fast, you'd, this would be much more transparent with a few flecks. But when you do it this slow, you get the crystallization of the iron, it just total, and it goes that gold. So I love, it. I love doing it this way, but I also like the other way. Always rattle your kiln shelf when you take it off in case a prop is stuck to the underside of it. Um, this one's nice, and I poured the glaze in the center of this one, so we have a double layer of the matte turquoise with two faded areas either side of it. You can just see that. 
Um, this is one combination I don't do very often. Um, it's kind of okay. I, we'll see. Um, I like it. It's going to take some getting used to. The red is, uh, I was worried about this red. It's cranberry from um, the Mastering Cone 6 Glaze, and I don't use it very much. I use it as an accent, and I thought it would a red and green should never be seen thing. So I put some on here. <laughs> Did you ever hear about that? Red and green should never be seen. I don't know why. And then we have a bunch of mugs that you've seen many times before. And I have some of the pictures, which some of these turned out really pretty. This is White Clay 516 from Pottery Supply House. I, I've got a lot of that clay left and not much of my speckle. Uh, but it's the 2nd of March, so I'll be able to get new clay within six weeks, hopefully. I don't like getting clay in the cold months because if the truck breaks down, you could have a frozen ton of clay in the truck. But uh, matte turquoise, very goody blue with oatmeal over the top. And then the mugs are all ones you've seen before. The black, I'm, I'm doing a few more pieces in that. I have a nice grouping of these to put out. My showroom's full, I don't have any room to put anything out, I shouldn't. Sort of, uh, I don't know. I, I like to sell the older work before I put the new work out because I date things. You see, people often say, Can I have a new piece? <laughs> it is new, it's never been on the shelf, but it could be, you know, maybe the last year's date. Anyway, I won't show you the most because you've seen them before.